Thank you, Wade. God is good. He, uh, he never lets go. He is our help in ages past. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And we have 10,000 reasons. All of that is true. And all of that is what we cling to. Um, it's a great joy to be before you again. Um, we are continuing on in our series uh, on the Sermon on the Mount. Maybe until Jesus comes. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'll just go ahead and let you know we are in chapter 5. Just let your Bible go. It'll open. If it doesn't open there, it'll open to 1 Corinthians, and you just go back a little bit. It's fine. 1 Corinthians 5, or no, good grief. If you want to, I mean, uh, Matthew 5, uh, we are uh, in verse 33 today. And um, again, we are... Uh, here in the Sermon on the Mount, the, the inaugural address of the king, uh, Jesus is telling us what it is to live in the kingdom and what it is to be a, a kingdom citizen and what we are to be like and how upside down and backwards this seems from the world, doesn't it? Uh, he has taken what they'd been told and what they had externalized and turned it inward. Because God looks on the heart of man and not on the outside, all right? Uh, he had said that when he chose David, and it's still true. Why we do what we do always, always matters. And getting to the heart of the issue, getting to the motivation of the issue, that's, that's what Jesus is getting at here. And so... Uh, if you would stand with me, we'll read a few short verses here. You can rejoice that it's a few short verses because you won't be late to dinner. You might be late to lunch, though. We'll see. Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 33, it reads like this. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the, of the great king. Do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Let's pray. Our Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you that it speaks to us today. You have not left us to figure things out for ourselves. You have laid it out for us. Lord, forgive us when we relax the demands. Lord, forgive us when we ignore the demands. Call us back to yourself. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us today through me if possible, in spite of me if necessary, but Lord, speak as your children have gathered here today to hear from you, to make us more like Jesus, is our prayer in his name. Amen. It's a humdinger of a passage, isn't it? So when I was a kid, my grandfather made sure that I got to see westerns, as all grandfathers should, right? Uh, we would watch them, uh, particularly when we were on vacation. Uh, they had a travel trailer, and we, we went all over the country, and always in the evening, no matter where we stopped, because this was in the day before cable, kids, and there was no internet or anything. It was awful. We just had to use the antenna off the top of the camper. And you may not be able to get the local news, but you could get a Western. 
And so um, I think I've seen, uh, I can't say I've seen every John Wayne movie multiple times because there are too many. But he made sure that I had a good sample of John Wayne and Clint Eastwood. Those are very different westerns, though, aren't they? Very different. Josie Wales is very different than True Grit. But I love them both. But the thing that I took from that is whether it's a John Wayne character or it is a Clint Eastwood character. Even the later Clint Eastwood stuff, like Unforgiven, it's rated R, don't watch it. There's a code that they live by. They don't break the code, right? There's a particular way that you live your life. And when you give your word, it is your word, period. It doesn't matter if you are the good guy or the bad guy, even the bad guys. There's, you know, there's no honor among thieves, but careful what happens to you when you get caught and put in prison. There's a particular way that we deal with things. We tell the truth, always. Don't we teach our kids that? Verbally, anyway. We tell the truth. If for no other reason, then you don't have to have a good memory if you tell the truth. You don't have to remember every lie that you told and every lie to cover every other lie. We tell our children, just tell the truth. And then we vote for people who don't. So I had all these westerns with these cowboys who live by their code and I'm this way and this integrity and all this kind of stuff. But I was also a Star Wars guy. And Ben Kenobi said that Darth Vader killed Luke's dad and he didn't. And we didn't find out for nine years later or whatever. But as a boy, seeing, oh, he betrayed and murdered your father. Oh, that guy. No wonder we don't like him. And then two movies later, actually the next one, no, 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 what he told you wasn't true. I'm actually your father. I didn't do the voice or the line, but you get the idea. And it's crushing, right? This is the truth. No, it's not. And so he comes, to, he comes to his mentor. You told me he betrayed and murdered your father. Well, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Lame. John Wayne wouldn't have said that. Clint Eastwood wouldn't have said it either. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, right? And so we come to this. We come to this passage And once again, here's Jesus. Again, you've heard that it was said of those of old. Again, we heard about this with divorce. We heard about this with murder. You've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. Don't, don't swear things that you don't mean. Be careful about giving your word about stuff. Right? And be careful because you shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. See, when you make an oath before God, he heard. He was there. And they took this very seriously. Right? It's, it, it, this is not talking about don't, it, Jesus is not going to tell you don't swear oaths, don't make vows, or any of that stuff. Now, some churches have gone that way to where even when you're on the witness stand, you don't put your hand on the Bible and all that kind of stuff. I don't think he's going that far, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But, but the idea here is keeping your word. And standing behind all of this is the idea of covenant. It's a very foreign concept 
in our culture. Covenant. Contracts we know. And we know exactly when they're binding and when they're not. Covenant. Two parties decide how they're going to behave toward each other. I'll do this, you do that. You do that, I'll do this, right? God does this throughout the Old Testament and on even to the New Testament. Jesus does this. This is the new covenant in my blood, for crying out loud. There it is. There are expectations. Be careful because when you stand in pulpits or sit in pews and say the covenant is real and the expectations are to be followed, be prepared to be called either a legalist or a Pharisee because that's where the culture is now. Well, see, you're just laying rules on people. I didn't write it. These expectations are there. Now, it seems pretty low, the bar here, keep your word. What you say that you'll do, do. Seems pretty easy to say. (laughs) The issue is, is that we live in a culture that lies as easily as it breathes, right? Everybody's looking for a loophole. Everybody's looking for the way out. And some people will lie when the truth will do just fine. We are, the, the real epidemic is that we are all, you know, the whole culture is infected with stage four liabilities. And it just goes out, right? And, and they'll just lie when the truth would have been fine. Just make stuff up. And well, it, technically... And its cousin, well, actually. But the point here, that what, they were, what was told to them of old and what is still told to us today, keep your word. And in the early days of Israel, they took this very, very seriously. By the days of Jesus, not so much. Does it sound familiar? In Genesis 15, Abram, God is making a covenant with him. Greater than the seas, you know, the, the, the sand on the seashore, right? Greater than the stars in the sky. And they do this ceremony that seems so bizarre to us because it's so different. And he has him go out there and he gets some animals and he cuts them in half and lays them out. See, I told you. And then God symbolically passes between those animals to make the covenant. What does that mean? It means that if I don't keep my end of the bargain, if I don't do what I say I do, may this happen to me. Now, we know God cannot be cut asunder, but we also know that God cannot not keep his side of the covenant. Aren't you glad? Yes, I will save you if you will trust in Jesus. Oh, no take backs. doesn't work that way. Abram understood this. Moses on Mount Sinai, right? I am the Lord God who brought you out of Egypt. That's what I'm going to do. Here's what you do. Don't lie. (laughs) Don't murder people, right? The top ten. There are others. Lay it out there. He takes it very seriously. The prophets call them back to it all the time. One of my personal favorites is in the book of Joshua chapter 9 there are some people the Israelites are coming and they're taking the land and they're winning and God is giving them the promised land and 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 these people called the Gibeonites show up and they and they show up and they and they're very very crafty and they're very very clever they convince Joshua We're not from around here. Please don't wipe us out like you do everybody else. We promise we'll be good. (laughs) Sound like your kids? (laughs) Promise this time. And Joshua believes them. And so before the Lord, they make a covenant of peace with the Gibeonites. Then they go over the next hill, and there's their city. Oh, they lied. And so the people go, well, if they lied, we're not held to it, right? 
Isn't that what we would say? Well, they lied to go into the thing. He sold me that car, and I, I didn't even have wheels on it. I'm sorry I didn't look. But he lied to me, so now I don't have to go through with it, right? No. No, Joshua tells them, no, we swore this before the Lord that we would have peace with these people, and so we will. It doesn't matter if they keep their word, we will. It doesn't matter if liars in the world don't keep their word, we will. So says the Lord. There are other instances. Some of them are even harder to take than the one with the Gibeonites and Joshua. But in the early days, even in the days of the judges, when Scripture says everyone did what was right in his own eyes, they still kept their word on certain things. There was a judge named Jephthah. It's in Judges 11. I'll let you look at it on your own. It's a little too tough for me. Makes a vow. The first thing to come out of the door, Lord, if you'll just let me do this thing, if you'll just let me win, then the first thing that comes out the door to greet me, I will offer to you, hoping it's the dog and it's his daughter. There are hard, hard passages in Scripture. And so, yes, they were told of old, you, you, you shall not swear falsely. Perform to the Lord all that you have sworn. Verse 34, but I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it's the throne of God, or, or the earth, for it's his footstool, or by Jerusalem, it's the city of the great king. Don't take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Don't I know it? So what happened? Is he, is he saying, oh, we're just not going to do oaths anymore? No, no. We still make vows and we still do the whole oath thing, but we need to be careful about it. There are still vows. I, I went to my niece's wedding yesterday. There were vows, very important ones. She's 19. She'll be 20 in two weeks. She stood before God and her family, and so did her new husband. And they made vows. Not just in front of us, but in front of everybody that ever is forced to watch that video. Oh, to have been married before videos. We're going to show ours to our kid probably. Joanna's very excited. <laughs> but there she was, as beautiful as she'll ever be, right? The dress and the makeup is perfect. Brothers and sisters, she wore a tiara. Girls, she wore a tiara. And it was great. And they stood there and they made promises, right? Sickness, health better or worse, all, this, all the stuff. And then that preacher turned to us and asked us to vow too, to help them keep theirs. Wow. And you know what we said? We will. And I meant it. We still do this. Just a few weeks ago, I stood right there and there was a whole bunch of families right here with their kids, right? Vows to raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And we said, yes, we'll help you. We'll pray for you. We'll, whatever, we are here to strengthen you. So please don't hear Jesus saying, don't make vows, don't make promises, that's for losers. He's not saying that. What he is saying, as he's been doing, is careful where your culture goes when it strays from the Word of God. You see, just as, as before, with the marriage thing and, and, and with the murder thing, 
The scribes and Pharisees invented extenuating circumstances. People love loopholes, don't they? Again, if you've not raised children, if you're not in the process of raising children, just trust me, kids love them. Are you sure? You did, what did I tell you to do? Well, I picked up my room. Yeah, and you put it all on the bed. Or you shoved it all in the closet. Yeah, but you pick, I picked up everything on the floor. Technically, you said get all the stuff off the floor, and it's off the floor. Is that obedience? And all God's people said, no. <laughs> no. And so the scribes and Pharisees had come up with a system. What if we don't swear to the Lord that we'll do things, but we'll swear by other stuff? And if you swear by other stuff, then if you need to wiggle out of it, you can. Because we all know that if you swear and make a vow before God, he'll hold you to it. So let's not do that, but let's kind of work around this a little bit. And so there, every one of these, every one of these, can you imagine? I swear by heaven that I will do this. Well, as it turns out, technically, heaven doesn't hold me to it. But Jesus says, oh, yes, but that's where the Lord is, right? Oh, well, what about, what about um, okay, so heaven's the throne of God? Okay, well, what about by the earth? That's his footstool. And you're, it's still his stuff. God is still involved. God is still present. Well, I didn't technically swear to God, so no. By Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And this is the one I can't quite wrap my head around, verse 36. Don't take an oath by your head. You cannot make one hair white or black, or hang on, apparently. <laughs> I swear by my own head. You've heard this. I swear on my mother's grave. I won't do that. If you knew her. You see, the problem with all this is we're, we're stuff, right? Well, I swear by this, I swear by that, whatever. The problem is God is still there. Where can I flee from your presence? You're still making the promise in the presence of God. You still have to keep it. The entirety of our lives as Christians is lived in the face of God. He sees all of it, even the stuff that you wish he didn't. God knows the skeletons in every closet, but he loves us anyway. But he still knows, and he still sees. And so when we try to play fast and lose, we go, oh, Lord, technically, God doesn't deal in those kind of technicalities. He was already there there before you got there. God's omnipresence closes every lying loophole. And so what do we do? Don't take these oaths. Don't do this. Don't, do, don't be like the world. This is not the first time Jesus has said that, by the way. Don't be like the world. We should be different. Are we? Usually, probably. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes we do have a little trouble with the truth. Sometimes we are beleaguered by lies. In this very room, we have been. Man, I didn't want to preach this passage. Church deception has occurred within our body. 
Lies have been told. Oh, that's a nice way of saying it. People have told lies. There, we said it. People have said things that were not completely true. And if it's not completely true, then it's, just, you know, it's only partially, uh, well, if it's just partially, it counts. People have been led astray. People continue to be led astray. People believe things that aren't true about God, about our fellow man, about other believers. We can't do that anymore. We claim to follow Jesus. And if we're going to follow Jesus, I'll remind you that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We cannot claim to be following someone who is the truth and not tell it and not believe it and not accept it. I'm keeping my eye on the door over there in case I need to run. Solution to all this, verse 37. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Better translation, probably, from the evil one. Makes sense, doesn't it? We know who that is, the evil one. The one who deceived from the very beginning. Did God really say? And right there in the garden, well, we're told not to touch. We're not supposed to touch it or even look at it. Never said don't look at it. People are always about protecting, right? Well, just to be sure, don't even look at it, because if you don't look at it, you won't touch it. I'm going to look. Isn't that in us? Especially this side of the garden. Oh, you tell me don't look, I'm looking. You're diabetic. Don't eat that. I'll have three. <laughs> and the insulin shots that go with them. <laughs> Loopholes. See? It's a matter of character, isn't it, brothers and sisters? Your yes being yes and your no being no, we are called to be the kind of people that when we say yes, everyone believes us. And when we say no, everyone believes us. An additional oath to back it up and kind of prop up our character, well, I swear on a stack of Bibles. If you have to swear on a stack of Bibles, you hadn't read it. <laughs> I will hold you to it anyway looking around for, oh, how can I make them believe me? Your life, your character, your integrity, your love and defense and belief of the truth in all places, all times, all cases. But you don't know how I've been. Yeah, I do. I've been there too. Sometimes our character needs a little rehab, doesn't it? A little character therapy. And it hurts worse than physical therapy. I know how that hurts. I got this shoulder, right? Oh, that's you know, sore. And every physical therapist makes marine drill sergeants look soft. You're not crying yet. You're not doing it right. Those of you who are young, you don't know yet. One day you'll be old, and you'll have to do physical therapy too. And your insurance won't cover it. <laughs> but sometimes your character gets out of whack, doesn't it? You get into some sin. Maybe you get into a lot of sin. And it rolls downhill, and it snowballs. And pretty soon it's huge, and it's right here in front of me, and my sin is ever before my eyes. How shall I now live? Repent. That's always it, isn't it? 
well, I wasn't careful with the truth. Okay, repent. Ask forgiveness. It's just a two-step thing. You know what happens when somebody lies to me and then later comes back and says, I'm sorry, I lied. I sometimes literally jump for joy. When your kids come to you, maybe tears in their eyes if we're lucky. Daddy, I lied. I didn't do my homework like I said. Yes, I know. Your teacher told me. We homeschool, we know. We had a teacher conference this afternoon. (laughs) Faculty got together. I'm sorry you're expelled. (laughs) Daddy, I didn't do it, and I said I did. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Of course. With the huge, massive buckets of grace and mercy delivered to me daily by my Lord. How could I do anything other than forgive anyone else for whatever? Well, you know, he has a little trouble with the truth. Welcome to the human race. We lie here. Terrible about it. But Jesus says, if you're a citizen of the kingdom... If you're going to follow Jesus, let your yes be yes, your no be no, and that will be enough. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. We are called to be people of integrity. We are called to be people of the truth. We're called to be people who are honest even if it hurts, even if it causes a problem, even when, not if, it costs us something. Ooh. It's as John Huss said, it is better to die well than live badly. You can come to the end, right? right? There are people who, you know, Ezekiel talks to, the God talks to Ezekiel about this, if, about this man who's just awful all through his life, and he's just murderous, and he's sinful, and everything else. But on, on his deathbed, he repents, and God hears him and forgives him. Man, we hate that story. Unless it's me. And the other man who lives, oh, so well, and then just finishes badly. Like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. He works down the hall from me. I work from home. (laughs) I know that guy, too. But integrity, being who you say you are, even when no one's looking. Oh, when no one's looking, because someone always is. See, character matters. Regardless of what our politicians say, regardless of what Holly Weird says, regardless of what the nightly news will tell you, regardless of what the latest political push or cultural shift will tell you, character matters. Integrity is important. It is important in our pulpits. It is important in our pews. And I say that as someone who is in both places. And I say that to my my brothers and sisters right here in my First Baptist Church family, that if you see me stumble, please help me. Call me on it. Pull up the video now. See, now it's going to be on the internet. You said... Because in that moment, I won't want you to, right? Sorry I got caught, not sorry I did it. That hurts all the way up the toe. 
Character matters. But this integrity that Jesus is talking about, this honesty that Jesus is requiring, this comes when we live so consistently that we don't need to prop up our word with anything other than our reputation that is built upon our past actions and our present ones. How many times have you heard something about somebody and said, that can't be true? I know him. That's, I know who I'm talking to. That can't be true. No, no way. I have former students that I hear things about them later. Good things, and I go, oh, that can't be true. <laughs> how are you going to make, how you, do they know? Boy, I made a D in my class. Maybe on purpose. And then there are the heartbreaking ones. Where you're, you're, I was his Bible teacher. I was her Bible teacher. I poured into them for years, right? Oh, investment, investment, investment. And they answered all the questions correctly. And now she's married to a woman after she divorced her husband. It's just one. It's heartbreaking. Character, though. Consistency. We don't have to prop up our word with I swear to whatever because people know isn't that who you want to be the kind of person that, that when, when something comes up and the local newspaper <laughs> local <laughs> newspaper local has to be in quotes now it's a furniture store out there now <laughs> oh what a year something comes up in the paper and you think, well, that can't be right. Somebody's being slandered here. I know him. He's not like that. His yes is yes, his no is no. Clearly, you're misinterpreted. And then we go and we find out that, yes, that's exactly what happened. Well, good. Or worse, we find out that we didn't know that person. But see, this became a basic, fundamental belief in the early church, just like it was a basic, fundamental belief in early Israel, that you, you do what you say, you keep your promises. The book of James, quite possibly the first book in the New Testament written. It's either James or Galatians. I don't have time to go through that because I see what time it is. They move the clock. James 5, 12, but above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Does that sound very much like what Jesus said? They paid attention. We should too. One of the early church fathers, his name was Justin Martyr, not really his last name. It's more of a description brings this up. The early church counted on their integrity to lend weight to their witness. They live this way, and they are people who tell the truth. So when they talk about this Jesus who died on a cross and got out of the grave, they say it the same way they talk about bread costs three drachma or whatever. I don't know how much a drachma is. We, 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 we know that they're, they're the same either way. And so they're not going to lie to us about Jesus because they didn't lie to us about anything else. And the early church banked on this. Don't fall under condemnation. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. And yet, I fear that just as Israel found a way to make loopholes and their, and their religious leaders found a way to get around the truth, to massage it a little bit, 
many in our churches have done that as well. Well, technically, the Bible says that's actually the response. Well, technically, no, but the Bible says. Yeah, but the Bible says, right? Do we believe it or not? It's pretty straightforward. Yes be yes, no be no. So let me just bottom line this for you. At 11.30? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe 11.45. Three things to walk away from this passage with. Number one, take integrity seriously. Integrity means that everything holds together. A ship on the high seas without structural integrity will sink. Same for our souls. Without integrity, we will sink because the world out there is the high seas. And the storm's blowing, isn't it? Do what you say you'll do, be who you say you are. So easy to say. But my goodness, doesn't it make you stand out? My older daughter had some coworkers come to her recently because they noticed something about her. So we've noticed that when you get into stressful situations where we all say certain things, Grace, you don't cuss. Why not? She said, that's not who I am. I don't do that. Because of my Christian faith, I don't do that. And that was the end of the conversation. They didn't stone her with, with cheesy bread or anything. <laughs> there was no frozen meatballs tossed her way. But now they know. That's who she is. And more importantly... Now she said it, and she has to live that. Take integrity seriously. Number two, take honesty seriously. When you vow, mean it. When you promise, keep it. And when you swear, keep your word doesn't matter if the other person lies, bunch of Gibeonites. It doesn't matter if I didn't think it was going to go this way. We recently helped a lady move from her apartment to a different apartment. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but that's not something I do a lot. I don't even like moving my own stuff. And I said, we will help you. And then I said, we'll send some guys over. <laughs> we did send some guys over. And she said, I thought you were coming. So I was there. Me and like 85 other guys, it was crazy. More like 15, but my goodness. You know how fast 15, 20 guys can move a one-bedroom apartment? About 25 minutes. It's crazy. Her head was spinning, not literally, but close. Thought you were going to be there. Yes, ma'am, I'll be there. I think I probably touched five boxes. Kara was so proud. He worked. She had the Tylenol ready for me when I got home. I didn't need it. Take honesty seriously. Lastly, take the truth seriously. Actively stand against lies, falsehoods, and half-truths. We cannot truck in that stuff, he said, sounding like Tom Sawyer. We cannot we, the, brothers and sisters, the time is too short. It is too late in the game to be slippy with this stuff and to play fast and loose with the truth. 
not just don't lie. Well, I didn't lie. But did you tell them, did you call them out? Did you confront it? One of my favorite Russian authors, <laughs> it's a sentence I've never started that way before. I only have two. One of my favorites, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. I said his name wrong because I'm not Russian. He stood against the Soviets and they sent him to the gulag. He kept writing and they exiled him. He came to America gave an address at Harvard, and they laughed him out of the building. Harvard was liberal in the 70s. Careful where you send your kids. But he said this, the simple step of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. One word of truth outweighs the world. Brothers and sisters, we follow he who is called truth. You better believe he outweighs the world. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. We're not there yet. Take the truth seriously. Now that was a message that could have been preached in about 10 minutes by anybody but me. I believe we as a church need this. I believe that we as a church and we even individually, some of us, maybe a lot of us, have bought into some things that weren't completely true. I have believed some things that were not completely true. I repent. If you want a list of them, it's going to be dark before we get to it. To the end of it. The truth and our integrity are what we have. Our word must be sprinkled and seasoned with his word or it will make no difference. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit who leads us into all truth and gives us the words to say. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that not only are we called for our yes to be yes and our no to be no, but you've given us the ability, the strength, the wherewithal to do that. Lord, you've not called us to do anything you've not equipped us to do. May we lean on the Spirit. May we point to Jesus as you draw people to him. Lord, there may be some here this morning who need prayer down here at the front. There may be some here who have never trusted Christ and they need to do that for the first time. Lord, give them the nudge. Lord, give them the push if need be. Lord, I pray that you would send your spirit among us in a special way now. Stir your people. Spur us on to good deeds. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.